So I've been noticing my succulent garden is looking a little bedraggled. Um, this area gets so much light and I have been neglecting it over the winter months. So you can see some succulents are really leggy and some succulents have mealybug. I see a mealybug right here. Look at this mealybug. Oh my God, that is so gross. I'm actually not grossed out by it, but. So I basically have six new plants that I could use to kind of refresh some of these. So I'm gonna go through um, some and see what I could actually recycle. Like look, like the tea container is pretty rusted. These have been sitting here for like six or seven years. So it is totally time for a refresh. So that's what I'm gonna do today, some potting. I have all these new tea tins. You could tell I'm a big fan of peppermint bark. <laughs> I kind of like collecting lots of different tea tins with different artwork on it, but you know, I can't go away when I'm on a kick of a certain kind of tea. And I like that tea. Here's orange ginger mint, so that'll give a little bit of uh, diversity. And then this reishi turmeric ginger. It even still has a bag in it. We're gonna have to toss that. Add some more peppermint bark. I went crazy for peppermint bark this season. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's actually a perfect fit. I didn't even plan that out. So I need to get actually six of these that I need to replace. Which ones? This one I think I wanna replace, although I like this tea tin, so I might this one I moved from the front to the back and it hasn't really sun scorched, so that's why. That one's fine. Let's see which else I hear these. Kleinia are actually doing really well. This one's too leggy. This one has mealybugs that are probably spreading to elsewhere. This one also has mealybugs, so we're gonna deal with these. This one is the same kind of colonchoe. It does have a couple mealybugs, but I think I'm gonna keep this planted and probably just deal with the mealybugs. Let's see what else. This one's not doing as hot as I would like it to be. I just pulled a colonchoe out. And maybe this graptopetalum. This one's a little desiccated. Yeah, so this is time for a renewal. This looks like enough work for me. soil. eyeballing about half cactus mix and a little less than half perlite. And I'm also gonna add some drainage when it comes to some bonsai mixture, which has some lava stones as well. I'm just mixing this up a little bit. I sometimes will have a drainage layer in here, but I kind of find like you don't need it. As long as you have something that's well draining. And yes, these do rust after a while, as you could see with this one. It's pretty rusty. The water just eats right through it. But then it gives you an opportunity to plant some more. I don't mind that. People ask if I have hole, like a hole in the bottom of these, and I don't, again, I don't find the need to do it, so I don't do it. You can if you want, though, and you can have a little basin below it. But like I said, I have, I've had these for like six or seven years. So I can't remember the exact time when I got them, but they've been around for a little while. That looks like a really nice mix. I really like taking some of the cactus mix and just adding more perlite. I love well-draining soil. I feel like it lasts a little bit longer too. 
first one I'm going to deal with is this Colin Coey. And you guys might shudder, but because it's just covered in mealybugs, I'm going to compost this. There's nothing better than composting a plant that you're probably too far from saving and turning it back into soil, which is what I do with my compost. Now this, I'm going to finally recycle it. So I upcycled it for a while and now I'm gonna recycle it. It's better than like having to clean it because it's already pretty rusted. All of these are a little rusted. You can actually see even the rust marks coming through here. I actually am going to cut these and replant them again. So just the tops because they got really stemmy. So I'm going to just cut this off. I don't have enough places for propagation, but I could let these sit on the top and superize over, which just means callousing over um, so it doesn't rot. I'm going to take off the rest of the stems. This is my Peperomia dulliberformis. It does, it has a little spider mites on it. I think somebody had mentioned, they were like, your dulliberformis has spider mites, and it does. It's not supposed to be in the southwest facing window. These should be pulled a little bit further back. But um, against my best judgment, I kind of put it there. I love this, these tea tins as well. So I'm probably gonna recycle this. I might give this a little good wipe out. So there's nothing, no pest vectors there. This is a toothy aloe, and it's customary for toothy aloe to dry off, especially if it's getting under intense light. So I'm gonna keep this toothy aloe, and I'm gonna recycle this container. All right, time to start. I think I'm gonna use this one because I definitely wanna plant this Senecio up in here. Actually, I wonder if this is still Senecio. I think they might have actually um, put this into a new into a new genus called Kleinia. Not quite sure, I have to double check on that. You can see that this grower uses a lot of uh, clay, a lot of turfus, a lot of bonsai looking material that I've, I've also put into this mix. Always a good sign. I'll water these afterwards because they are in desperate need of, of water. Some of these plants came in um, a little dehydrated to start. And of course, they can handle it a little bit because they are succulents, but um, I still don't want to see them too thirsty. All right, that's that first one. Kind of cool, right? 
gives a little bit of height in the window since I have the space anyway. First for peppermint bark. This is a really cool plant called Cissus quadrangularis. I like the really chunky stem. Let's cut this off a little bit. This came bare root and is also pretty thirsty. Need a smaller utensil. I love using spoons as opposed to trowels sometimes because I just am planting in such small planters sometimes. It's going to take a while for these roots to take hold in this soil, so you have to kind of pack it in a little bit tighter. Not pack it so much so that there's no air, but just enough so that the stems don't fall over. There you go, that's the second one. Actually, these would be nice. I'm just gonna set these on the soil surface. Let them root up again. All right, let's see what's next. More peppermint bark. Much easier with the spoon in this case. This is a Colin Coey. Let's see. I like the growth structure of this particular species. Some leaves are falling off. But they might have got a little damaged. Yeah, this is a good height. That one's super cute. Love that. Colin Coy are like, I'd probably say my second favorite succulent genus. All right, next up is going to be orange ginger mint. Might have to make some more soil. Crassula. It's a cute little string of buttons, it's called. They like to fall off though. Very easy to, to bump around. A little bit more space down there. There you go. There you go. 
Look at that. Crassula are probably one of my favorite, my favorite succulent group. There you go. A little string of buttons. <laughs> All right. Next one up is another peppermint bark. This is Rauschia. It's actually quite rooted on the bottom, so I'm going to get the roots out a little bit. Let's break them up a little bit. Like that. Put that in here. Cool looking succulent. The way that it grows. Stems. I'm gonna put this aloe back into a container and I wanna do it with the Colin Coey. These Colin Coey pop up everywhere ever since I got this. Um, actually, this is a brow film, I believe. It's always swapping out between brow film and Colin Coey. I don't know if uh, taxonomists can make their minds up, but uh, this was a rescue plant, and this is one of the babies that probably fell into the container and just like sprouted up. messy but it doesn't have to look perfect. A little unkempt. Just a bunch of ragamuffins sitting in this uh, upcycled tea container. All right so the next one is this one and I think I'm going to do this with my aloe here. And I might save some of these Haworthia and then cut out some of these Moonstones. The same way I did the last ones. Let those sit on top. This could be composted and turned into good soil. Not the plastic, but the rest of it. All right. Yet again, making some more soil. Should have probably cleaned this one out, but I didn't kind of went for planting. So hopefully no spider mites will harm this little aloe. Spider mites on aloe is kind of unusual, at least in my home. All right, and these little Haworthia 
which have crazy little roots. Look at those roots. They have like little papery elements to their roots too. I don't even know what they the, that is called. Super cool. I think a lot of these are actually not even in, um, in Haworthia anymore. They might be Haworthiopsis. New genus. Crazy. Okay. Right, let me just use this spoon. Final remainder. Let's see if I got this, the amount of soil right for this. almost like a gasteria. There I'm going to run and get some water. I'll be right back. These are going to appreciate a little drink. Especially this one because it was pretty dry when I got it. Let's take a look what's happening over here. I want to remove anything that has mealy bugs. This looks okay. This one definitely needs some water. Nope, it's the mealy bugs. It's the mealy bugs. Oh, this is a shame because I've had this one for so long. I'm probably gonna wash this one. This is a type of ripsalis shouldn't necessarily be in the southwest facing window, but for whatever reason, it does do pretty well. Sans the mealy bugs. Let's clean up some of this. This Kleinia here is going crazy. And Camposeros right here. Probably could use a little bit of water. Look how fuzzy it is. It's looking a little bit draggled though, as is this one. I might just compost this one. You guys hit the six year mark and then you just decided to be a little sad looking. Okay. <laughs> Look at these. I can't believe how these little bryophyllums just like find a place to house themselves and then just grow, grow, grow. There you go. See, this one's got some mealybugs on too in the root. Not good. I'm gonna have to do like a whole mealy bug fix right here. Okay. Mealy bugs. And I love this little guy. Luckily, he doesn't look like he has any mealy bugs on him. I'm gonna make sure this one doesn't have any mealy bugs. Very hard to see because you never know where they're hiding. I'm gonna take a chance because I'm gonna put this one right in here because I want this one. I like this color going. Let's see what else I have here. This one's got mealy bugs too. Such a bummer. So I'm gonna have a little bit more space while I kind of fill this out. This side seems to have been mealy bug free. This 
one's got mealy bugs and that one's got mealy bugs. So what I'm gonna do is try to keep the mealy bug free ones over here. Container soon. Euphorbia has a little leaf on it. This one's outgrowing its container as well. This one's popping out of its container. This one just needs a little bit of tender love and care. Okay. Clip off some of these dead leaves on the bottom. it for now I think. I like to do these things in stages. I mean they don't have to be done all at once. Um, it's nice if it could be done all at once but so this is what I have the time for today and so this is what I'm going to take the time to do. Otherwise I think that looks nice. Surprisingly I actually like when it breathes a little bit more but sometimes I get like crazy and I just put them all stashed shoulder to shoulder next to one another neck to neck on the uh, on the windowsill. Hence the reason why I had to create a double windowsill so I could have more plants in the window. But I think that looks pretty nice right now. I will definitely have to nix the mealybugs who have been attacking my succulents. It looks as if it kind of started from over here and started to waft over, but um, I don't see any mealybug problems below. I just see it on this one and it was probably because I was a little bit neglectful when it came to my succulents. Um, over the course of six years. So hopefully these will be a little bit better. Mm -hmm.